Hello Quintessentials, welcome back. My name is Posey, if you're new here. Um, this is my first upload in the new year. I know it's been a minute, but I'm back. Today I'm gonna to be talking about how to write a winning tender proposal. You are an entrepreneur, you're a small business owner, you're a big business owner, you want to expand, you wanna get more business, it's part of your goals for 2021, and you wanna figure out how you can get into that system and find a way that will help you to reach more um, corporate clients, reach government clients, because generally in South Africa, that's how business is advertised through these tender processes. Stay tuned as I give you the ins and outs to help you write that winning tender proposal. The first thing that you need to think about when you are applying for a tender is your sector. What sector are you in? Are you in ICT? Are you in marketing? What is the industry that you are in? And then obviously you will look for tenders and specify your search to meet that specific um, area of expertise. So in South Africa, we have portals online and tenders are also advertised via newspapers. So what you need to be doing, um, if you don't have internet access, is buying you know, your Sunday newspapers or your daily newspapers to see what tenders are out there and are they linked to your area of expertise. And then in addition to searching um, newspapers, so it can be you know, a physical print paper or you can go the online route and see what you can find online on the various um, news platforms. The other option is to go on tender bulletins. So there is something called satenders.co.za where all of the tenders are usually advertised for every sector. There's a platform also known as online tenders.co.za. So they also advertise available and new tenders. But I know that some of the, the SA, SA tenders is free, but online tenders is you have to pay a subscription fee but depending on your budget and what's available and your income your revenue streams then you will decide how far you want to go and how much do you want to pay personally i don't really recommend paying for finding out what tender proposals are out there because usually they are duplicated on the various websites the government website in south africa also has a bulletin board where you can check the latest available tenders and they are uploaded daily, weekly, monthly. So you need to make sure that you know, you're know you checking that. Personally, what I usually do is I check every Monday or so you need to have a, a day in the week where you sit and you sift through and you look at what are the tenders that are out there. I'm a public relations specialist. So I will look at all the tenders that are available for digital marketing, for PR, for communications, the whole works, website, etc. And if I see that there's anything relevant, then I need to obviously make a list and see which ones do I think are most suited for our agency and which ones I'm willing to pass up. With tenders, you have to be conscious of the fact that even though it might be sector specific and it might be in your area of expertise, it might not necessarily be something that you want to be going for. So you need to have those goals in mind when you are actually doing your search that this is what the service that I want to offer, this is my skill, and you know that you can actually offer that skill or you have a team or consultants or a network that can you can outsource the work to and make sure that you deliver good quality work when the time comes to submit. So first and foremost, you need to check um, the tender bulletins, check the deadline, that's the most important. Most tenders have a tender briefing session and if you miss the tender briefing session, then your tender will not be considered, particularly for government tenders. You need to check and see the tender briefing date and time because when you do arrive you will be required to sign you know, a form of attendance to sign the register to say that you were there you understood the brief and you were clear that you need to be checking when you are working on your tender is to check the tender briefing the date and the time assign a junior and administrator you can go yourself to that um, tender briefing and ensure that your company is represented and that your name is actually recorded in the register. Usually what they will do is give you a receipt and um, provide that receipt um, when you are actually 
um, submitting your tender. So if you don't have that proof to say that you were at the tender briefing, your submission will be none and void from the beginning. So it's very important to check that. And also it's important to check the address and know where the tender briefing is taking place. Be prepared, you know, to drive out and make the necessary arrangements because you will find that you live in Johannesburg, the tender is in Pretoria, is there enough time, etc., etc. Because if you're late, you may also not be able to enter the venue after a specific time that has been scheduled for that particular briefing. It's all about being punctual. It's all about attention to detail. This seems like minor, it seems like a minor obvious detail. It is very important that you check the tender briefing details from the get-go. The next thing that you will need to do, most importantly, is to read the template. So in South Africa, we have what we call SBD forms, so that's standard bidding documents. Most government contracts have a similar style or a template of how you know they want your tenders to be filled. And so you are declaring whether you've had any work with a particular organization or a government department. You need to declare your BE status. You need to declare um, your, your pricing schedule. And then in that, you also have to write a very tight proposal that will set you apart from other competitors so the SPD forms are pretty lengthy the SPD forms can be tedious and if you do fill them in incorrectly you will automatically be disqualified so if you miss a certain section if you don't sign a certain page or if you don't check every single item on that particular document you could lose out one of the main important points of actually filling out a tender document or writing a tender proposal is that you need to pay attention to detail and you need to give yourself time to actually go through the, the, the document and see what is required. I've learned from experience that if you try and work through a document, lastminute.com, then you start to see things that you didn't see before. You need time to go through the document, you need time to peruse and understand and see what is required because they find that you will have questions about a specific um, topic in the actual document. When it comes to um, questions or queries that you have on a tender document, you are required to write a formal question or a query to the actual organization. They will usually have names of or contact people from the procurement department or from the particular department that you will be working directly with. So you need to send formal questions if there's something that is in the document that you don't understand. And if it's a question that you may have that you, you missed or you didn't ask during the tender briefing session. What I would recommend is you download the document before the tender briefing um, session, read through it, just skim through it. And if you have questions, write them down so that you can ask the, the client you can ask the procurement department if there's something that you are not clear of but they do provide an opportunity to submit questions if there's something that you are not clear about but those the queries and the questions that you can submit are also they have a deadline so if you miss the deadline and you don't send your questions then there's nobody that's going to be able to assist you to answer those questions avoid avoid doing your tender documents the day before, the night before I've done it. It's very tight, it's very stressful, it's a lot of work. Completing a tender document is actually a full-time job on its own. So give yourself time so that you are doing the right things and you are, and you are providing the right information as well. Another part of the actual writing of your proposals, there's a standard bidding document. So those are the details that you fill of your company, where you are based, your costs, your rates, the organization that you are bidding to will provide specifications of the services that they require and they'll list a scope of work. So in your writing of your proposal, you will need to respond to that scope of work. So when you are writing your proposal, first and foremost, you need to think about your service offering and how you want to present it. You need to present it in the best possible light it is a competition and this is basically you pitching your business amongst 
hundreds and thousands of other competitors. When you're writing that document, it is tight. You are checking the spelling, you're checking the grammar, and more importantly, you, you are doing the necessary research of the company that you are bidding to, and you understand the work that they do and how you will respond as an organization to the client's needs. So in PR, perhaps they may require content management. I would have to read up on a particular, on that particular organization or government department and understand what is it that they do? What are they trying to communicate? How do we best package content in a way that will speak to the company's target audience? Um, sometimes in the content management structure, they may even add things like digital media. So how do we structure the content for the website? How do we structure content for social media? How do we structure the content for annual reports, etc.? Depending on what is in the scope, it, the, the scope will, will detail what exactly the client needs. And as the organization or as the agency, we then need to make sure that our pitch responds to those requirements. And you do get points for you know the quality of your proposal research the company first and foremost know who they are know what they're about know their target audience and understand your service offering so that you can better communicate it in a way that will get you the business that you need the next thing you need to consider is personalizing your tender so structure it in a way that it's easy to read have your ci your corporate identity clearly exhibited in your presentation of your document use your logos use your letterheads let it be clean and crisp you don't have to spend a whole lot of money but presentation is key use nice infographics display your organ your organogram your staff etc in a very clean and professional way and more importantly, communicate your service offering and your understanding of the brief. It's very critical that the client, when they read your document, they are assured that you understand the brief, you have an understanding of the work that is required, and you are able to respond to this brief according to the terms that have been specified in this document. So for tenders, you usually get points for the CVs that you provide, the director, so I'm a director, I have a business partner, so we would get points for that. It depends on your work experience as well. So I've been working in PR for almost 15 years now. So that would give me big points, you know, like 10 and above or whatever the amount is, it depends. You get points for your academic qualifications. So if you have honors, you have masters, you get points for that. You get points if you're a uh, for BEE compliance, black women, youth, black people, disabled people in your organization, you get points for that. And then you obviously get points for the delivery of the actual presentation, what um, your pitch, you get, you get points for that as well. And you also do get points for outsourcing. So if you outsource to you know, other SMMEs or if you're a big corporate and you, you outsource to smaller upcoming agencies then you get points for that as well those are the things that you need to consider when you are writing your proposal that is why i'm saying you need to give yourself time because you need to collate all this information get everybody's cvs get everybody's documents and make sure that they are neatly packaged what is also important um, when you are writing your tender proposal is to make sure that all your documents are up to date I've had so many times, and I know it's bad planning, where you are getting ready to submit a tender and you just realize that, oh my word, my tax certificate has expired or my BEE um, certificate has expired. Now you have to be running around and trying to get all those documents up to date. So initially, while you are still preparing for the writing process, check all your documents. So make sure that your BEE certificates are up to date. They have to be renewed every year. Your tax certificate also has to be renewed annually. You need to make sure that you have your annual report. Some tenders, they require that you provide proof of the liquidity or the solvency of your business. So you need to speak to your accountant so that they go through your books and they then write a letter for you that, an official letter that states that your books are actually in order and you have been managing them on an annual basis 
so it's very important to be organized in this regard and if you want to know more information about the documents that you do require when you are applying for a tender or when you are starting a business then please watch this video um, I go into depth about IPC forms that's the registration forms that you need as a company owner and I talk through how that whole process works you need to make sure that your documents are up to date because if they are not you will be disqualified there's not a doubt about it even if it's just one document that's expired or that is no longer valid your tender is completely thrown out they won't even look at it you don't want to be in a situation where you've been working tirelessly for hours and then you find yourself unable to submit because your tender was you didn't check that your documents were up to date another important part about documentation is getting reference letters so as you you collate and you start working with various clients and you start winning these tenders because now you know what you're a G and you're able to finish a document writing process you need to um, request for reference letters and those also add to the points of in the bidding process so when you've done work for a specific client, make sure that you do ask for reference letters because they go a long way. Usually when you're submitting a tender, you will be requested to submit at least um, three reference letters. So that's also people, organizations vouching for Kazimla Communications or whatever your company is to say, we've worked with her, we've worked with them and they know what they're doing. They're professional, they are, um, they deliver on time, they understand how to provide a particular service. So it's very important that you have those reference letters and always make sure that when you've done a job for a client that you asked for them and let that letter be on a company letterhead and signed by, you know, in my case, it would be the director of communications or whoever senior is or the person you were reporting to for that particular project let them sign it whether it's electronic or however but make sure you have those reference letters because you will need them once you have checked um, all your documentations you've got all your reference letters then what is key is to proofread 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 your tender proposal from start to finish usually it is quite a long document so you need to make sure that you have edited it properly like I mentioned earlier the spelling the grammar everything needs to be in order if you feel uncomfortable and you want to send it to somebody else to have a once over that does help because I found that when you work on a document for long enough you so you tend to miss certain things so you need to make sure that the quality of the writing is there you've researched the company you've mentioned all the salient points you've managed to sell your organization as equipped and able to deliver this particular service. Writing a tender proposal is not really difficult work, it's just preparation. You need to be very prepared and you need to give yourself time because as you're working on this tender proposal and if you're a small company like me, chances are you don't have a department where you just have employees that are working and writing proposals all day, every day. If you do, great, and there are actually organizations that are out there that can help that can help you to write your tender proposals for you but i would say if you're starting out and you're an entrepreneur it's very important that you learn how to master the skill for yourself because that's how you are going to gain livelihood so get into the habit of learning how to write get into the habit of practicing and you will see as you go along what has worked what hasn't worked I also found that when I work in collaboration with other businesses in the same field so there's the option of doing joint ventures so I often rope in um, my business partner because we have different strengths and when we when we collaborate and we work as a joint venture the chances of us winning a tender become much higher than when I submit just as a newcomer or as Kazimla on her own. So it's very important to also think about networks. So who can you network with? Who can you speak to? Um, who has the same skills or has different skills? And how can you merge those skills and turn it into a formidable business? 
you need to think about the person that's sitting on the other end of the page you know they want to make sure that you are you have a strong staff complement you're not a one-man show you can do the job they don't want to be calling you and you're telling them whoever is not available clients are not interested in that they want delivery and you also want to make sure that you are a, you appear as an, a professional shop and you know what you're doing so I would highly recommend networking I'd highly recommend partnerships joint ventures um, however you want to collaborate with other people but do that because it, it really really does increase your chances of gaining business because everybody's bringing in different skills different um, fields of expertise and I may have 13 years of experience in content somebody else has 10 years experience in social media digital so when you co when you consolidate all that those expertise you have yourself a formidable team so that is something that you really need to consider and then last but not least and the tender process is quite expensive because it requires printing you'll find that you'll need to print three copies of the same document you'll need to print your proof of um, portfolio so that could be in my case let's say I would have to print maybe a newsletter that I've done and I'd have to make copies of that newsletter as well so you need to really make sure that you prepare on time so that it's not a wasted exercise because it's your time it's your effort it's your money and you don't want to lose out a tender you know or potential business because you were not you were a bad planner now that we are in COVID, at least we can do these things virtually so it's less stress so you can literally attend a tender briefing virtually but make sure that you're there you're signed in use a template because you're going to be applying for a whole lot of different tenders so you want to make your life easy and you just want to structure your work in a way that is going to be easy and suitable for you to just plot in the things that you need to plot in as you are going through this process and the more you do it you'll find that the quicker you become you know and the more easier it does become once you've you've outlined um, a specific template for yourself check the SPD forms sign them make sure every page is signed make sure that you have signed every page you've initialed every page You've signed where you need to sign. If there's a commission of old stamp that's required, you go to the police station, you make sure that you've got that stamp. Every single page needs to be checked and double checked. And if you have a business partner or you have somebody else in your organization, let them also give it a once over and check that all the documents are signed properly. Because like I mentioned, if you miss one thing, it's over. You're not even going to be, you're not going to be, you're going to disqualify yourself automatically make sure that all your company documents are up to date so your cipc form your registration form your be certificate your tax tax clearance certificate make sure that everything is up to date nothing has expired whatever's expired get the process going while you are still doing the actual writing of the proposal and then when it comes to the actual writing of the proposal do the research understand the organization that you are pitching to and make sure that you clearly stipulate your understanding of the scope of work that is required and make sure that your writing is clean it's professional and you speak to the points that are you speak to the points that have been outlined in the tender document and understand that this is your pitch this is competition so this is what is going to literally get you the job and then also make sure that you get reference letters from your former or your former or your current clients because this will also add to your points and boost your chances of winning a tender. And last but not least, please, please, please submit on time. Check the deadline. Set your alarm. Do whatever it needs you need to do. If you need, if you know that the tender document needs to be slotted in in a in a in an office. That is in another city like i live in Joburg. i mentioned earlier and you have to drive to pretoria give yourself enough time to drive there to park to put your tender uh, envelope in the the tender document in on time because the the deadlines are usually very early it's usually like 10 between 10 and 12. so if you know that you're going to be driving out in this traffic then prepare accordingly 
and if it's going to be online they are also going to see that it was submitted at whatever time so same principle applies there as well so that's writing a tender proposal it ain't nothing to it you can do it and do give yourself time give yourself practice speak to other people in your sphere in your field and bounce ideas off each other it's 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 doable it's possible we've done it and we've won quite a few tenders so i'm here to say that you can do it and you don't have to be some big corporate or some connected person and there's no corruption or whatever that you have to you don't have to go the corrupt route just do the work that you need to do and you will get the results of the efforts that you put in if you have any other questions that you want to ask me about how to write a winning tender proposal please comment below like share subscribe and i'll see you in my next video thank you for your patience and i will be more consistent cheers bye